So, the Saturday Evening Post. It has a long history as a newspaper. It has even been debated on where it started, really. As this also something you may not easily find on the internet. Was it first started in 7029 as a history card where we're going to be learning about the topic, or 1821 where the first issue came out? Well, I guess it's your opinion. Due to the format I use, we may not be able to get into full detail or why is that. So without further ado, here is the Saturday Evening Post from the Story of America Cards Dot and Culture section. The Saturday Evening Post is an American magazine which is one of the oldest and it is still around. It was issued weekly under the title from 1897 until 1963, then every two weeks until 1969, from the 1920s to the 1960s, it was one of the most widely circulated and influential magazines within the American middle class, with fiction, nonfiction, cartoons, and features that reached the 2 million homes every week. For more than a half a century, the Saturday Evening Post ranked it high among America's most influential magazines. It was originally intended to supply Philadelphians with good, wholesome family reading on Sundays, and its list of contributors were such early giants in literature as Edgar Allan Poe, James Fenimore, Cooper, Stephen Crane, Bret Hart, Jack London, and Harriet Beecher Stowe. Some claim that the magazine's origins go back as far as 1729, when Benjamin Franklin published The Universal Instructor in All Arts and Sciences in Pennsylvania Gazette. That's a long title. The name was changed in 1779 to Pennsylvania Gazette and Weekly Adventure. In 1821, it was purchased by Charles Alexander and Samuel R. Atkinson, who renamed it and began publishing it as a weekend newspaper. Despite its development of a good fiction writers, the Post did not prosper under these gentlemen. In 1897, the magazine was brought by Cyrus Curtis, who was already publishing the Ladies' Home Journal with some success. Curtis wanted to give the public a quality weekly publication that cost only five cents, and he hired an editor named George Horace Lorimer to create such a magazine. Upon an invigorous virtue hiring the top fiction writers of the day for high fees and prominent payments, he revamped the additional pages, making sure that the Post tackled national issues with depth and seriousness. Soon, new advertising came to pouring in, and by 1909, the Saturday Evening Post boasted 1 million readers. Loimir continued as the Post's most outstanding editor until his retirement in 1936, bringing to his readers such new writing talent as F. Scott Fitzgerald, and Wing Linder. He also introduced the work of Norman Rockwell, whose sentimental homespun covers for the magazine made him one of the most favorite, America's most favorite illustrators. Rockwell's paintings of a small girl holding her doll out to be examined by a kind country, county doctor Remains one of America's all-time favorite magazine covers. Following World War II, America's reading habits changed, and in January of 1969, the Saturday Evening Post stopped publication. The competition from television and new, more specialized magazines was also an important factor of its demise. 
In June 1971, however, the post was brought back into circulation as a quality magazine and is now published nine times a year. Now, Rockwell wasn't the only illustrator to get attention on his work when his work was sold to the Evening Post. But he was quite unknown before it at just 22 years old in New York. And Rockwell had painted over 300 covers for the Post since then. Another illustrator from Nebraska, John Philip Falter, became known as a painter of Americana with an accent of the Middle West, who brought out some of the homeliness and humor of the Middle Western town life and home life. He did over 120 covers for the Post between 1943 and 1968. Another artist by the name of Charles R. Chickering was a freelance illustrator who went to design numerous postage stamps for the U.S. Post Office. And that is going to be the history for Saturday Evening Post coming from the Story of America cards. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time when I make a new history card video. As always.